but um, although I, I have to tell you, with seeing different events going on around the country, it does kind of make one nervous that I would like to get a generator on one of these buildings pretty darn fast. So, just generate your interest. <laughs> yes, indeed. That's all I've got. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Jeff. Building official, Russ Crayley. Mike Zubel, everybody's got my report. It was an overwhelming amount of business last month. Mm -hmm. It's starting to slow down. So that's about it. Okay, I just want to add a note that Russ is driving around again, taking a look. Uh, people should be prepping their properties for the winter season. Um, put your sports equipment. Uh, and furniture, anything that would be in the way of snow plowing, you should get it out of the right way. Put all that will be a reminder going out in the newsletter that will be hitting the mail. But please, uh, let's tidy up our properties for the winter season and get ready for the snow plowing season. Especially the basketball hoops. So yeah, the basketball wind hoops. starts to blow, those things blow over here. Uh, oh, Jeff did manage to get up the uh, fire hydrant flags already. Yes. Okay, uh, next on the list is our EMA coordinator, Mike Benko, who is working at uh, his uh, employer's office tonight, but he did send out a note. Uh, he just reminds everyone to begin to act on winter preparations for your homes and vehicles. Get your preparedness kits ready, especially for the car as well. Um, also, he is working some on some additions to the village website uh, in conjunction with emergency preparedness links and information. So he will be getting that to Kathy shortly to connect on the web. And uh, uh, he also was a participant uh, in our uh, town vehicle uh, for Halloween. And uh, I think everybody saw my patrolling. We had excellent patrol between the Police Department and Mike Benko EMA, and we were passing out blow light rings, and I think a good time was had by all. And I'm thrilled to say we have our police chief here tonight, Phil Fellini. Hello. Hello. Um, I would just like to say that uh, we enjoyed Halloween. <laughs> also, <laughs> I was out there myself, although nobody gave me any candy. <laughs> Um, but we did have several cars out, um, I'm sure you all noticed, uh, and as I understand from the feedback, that's probably more than you've seen uh, in prior years, but um, as a parent and as a close enough to be resident resident, um, I understand the importance of uh, Halloween to the community and to feeling safe, and um, if there's one day that everybody should feel safe and kids should feel safe running around and doing what they're doing, that's the day. So hopefully we made an impact, hopefully everybody felt it and, and, and felt good about it. Um, I know we had four or five officers out here at the same time and uh, we all had a good time and uh, I hope everybody else did. And the air were very impressive on my head, especially with the, uh, especially with the little tracker. I was getting a kick out of that one. You got a kick out of the spider. <laughs> that, got, that was a good one. Um, we are going through the accreditation process on the police department. In fact, we're finishing it up tomorrow. Um, our on-site um, evaluators are from Fairfield, Ohio, Chief of Police from Fairfield, Ohio, and Chief of Police from Frisco, Texas. Um, they've gone through all our files, um, and we're looking really good. Uh, they've been out riding with some of our officers. They've spent a lot of time out here uh, in Haynesville. I don't know if they've uh, spoken with any of you or anything, but uh, I know they were in a patrol car and they were out here both yesterday and today. Um, so that's going very well. We include that tomorrow. They both take off and then they give us a report. So, um, and we receive a report from the uh, Accreditation Commission. Um, actually, we have a, a little a hearing in front of them in March. So I'm sure we'll be reaccredited and uh, that's good for all of us. Um, we have the uh, Grays Lake Police Annual Report here. Um, that was generated, I think, um, Derek Soderholm and uh, Mike Ellis gave that to you when they were here um, last month. I don't know if anybody has any questions about that, um, but I've read it over, I can certainly uh, answer uh, anything in it, or you know, if you 
you have any other questions I can answer for you about services or wants or needs or anything like that. The, the one thing I want to stress particularly also for the uh, YouTube uh, viewers is that this report uh, is from July of 2011 to July of 2012 because that's our contractual year with the uh, police department. So um, the end of this report year is actually when Chief Perlini first came on board. So I mean it's an excellent report. But the next year's report will have had the chief, our new chief, at the helm. So if anything, chief, I don't know if you want to talk about anything that you've already read into there that you look at changing or just want to expand upon? Or? Um, well, you know, from the things I've seen, um, of course, I'd always like to see more uh, participation from the citizens in the survey. I'd like to see more surveys come back. I think it gives us a better idea of what we're, what we're really looking at. Um, although I see nothing really bad in there. Um, the one perception, and it's always a perception, and it's been for the entire time I've ever been in police work, it is traffic. Traffic is a, is a horrible issue, always meant, always will be. The roads are never built how they need to be built for traffic, and we're always going to run into the 120 problem and, and all this other stuff for probably our lifetimes in government anyway. Um, but I do know that uh, there is a problem with cut through traffic. There is a problem with speeders in the neighborhoods. We, we acknowledge that, we know that. Um, we know that there's been an issue with uh, stop arm violations um, on buses. Not so much on 120, we we're able to keep a real good eye on that, but in the neighborhoods, in fact, I was out today uh, following a bus around, which I do you know, probably once every couple of weeks or so. Even I get out and follow around the bus, but pretty much a couple of times, three times a week, there's an officer following a bus around just to, make sure that nobody's speeding past and, and doing a cross arm violation or stop arm violation there. We have heard nothing from the bus companies as far as complaints and things, um, and I haven't received any calls from residents. So um, I'm guessing that what we're doing is working out pretty well. We haven't written any citations for it, and uh, that's an instant citation. We see a violation of that, and he's getting a break. Um, nor do they get a break in the court system for that. So it's a, it's a pretty rough, uh, rough violation, but we have not observed any. Um, as far as speeding, um, I don't know if you've noticed, but we've had the speed trade around a couple different areas out uh, in, in town here. Um, I think now it's on, is it Deerview that it's on? Or I can't remember. Deer Cross. Deer Cross. Deer Cross. Deer Cross. Deer Cross. Um, and it's out there today. And I sat out there for a little while today just to you know, look around and stuff. And uh, I noticed I was going 17. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else notices their speed, but uh, I always look at mine. Um, but it, things seem to be going really well. Um, the one thing that I did notice and I would like to remind people about is closing their garage doors, even when they're home. Um, I have driven through the community um, during the middle of the day several times, and there are several times that I have noticed that there are garage doors outside, overhead garage doors, standing wide open which gives an opportunity for somebody to gain access into your house rather easily through a service door. Um, I would just encourage people to keep their cars keep their cars locked, keep valuables out of their cars and if they do have to have valuables in their cars keep them out of sight or locked up in the trunk or something and if you can keep your overhead garage door closed and get lights on at night it's huge. It helps us and it helps you. Um, we try not to bother you in the middle of the night. We put the cards uh, out on the doors. During the day, we don't really put the cards out. Um, and I'm thinking maybe uh, we're going to start putting them out even during the day when we start knocking on doors. That's a good point for an article, too, because there are, I know some families that will leave their garage door open all day. And if, if I wasn't so nervous about putting somebody through the roof of their own house, when I knock on the door and come walking in and say it's the police department, and I am <laughs> frightened about I mean, it does legitimately, especially in the middle of the day, will frighten anyone, somebody under in their house, as it should. But I guess the point is is that it's easily done. And, um, you know, we live along uh, a major a major highway here, a major artery, and you have to, you know, remain vigilant in the fact that um, you don't know who's traveling up and down these roads and when they're going to decide to turn off. And, you know, keeping a garage door closed is an easy thing to do. Very helpful for everyone concerned. So, 
I think your stats show that we have a safe, good community. And I want to thank the Grace Lake Police for their contribution to that part. I think it was a wise move on this board's part two and a half, three years ago when we bought uh, Grace Lake on board. It's worked out. I think it's a good relationship. And I'm looking forward to it continuing. Is it my, I think we do have a great relationship. I know I enjoy the town. I've been part of this town for before I was ever employed here. Um, you know, I've been a firefighter here for years. I have been sort of an adjunct part of the community. You know. Like I said before, that, that's my Walgreens. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm through here and in here all the time. I have been for years. So, um, you know, and maybe it's uh, I have a little bit more vested interest. I don't know, but uh, um, it's a great town. I love it. I drive through it every day, twice a day at least. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to, to staying on board and keeping things the way they are. Well, thank you so much, Chief. And we, we uh, look forward to next year's report after having you at the town for a year. It'll be even better. I know it will. Thank you. Chief, I do have one question. Go ahead. Uh, under your community presence, mm -hmm. since there's 27 individual neighborhood patrols now, that is consider V5 is for the whole year and the, the, yeah, I think so. what's the average which, which page are you on? Uh, eight, six. Okay. okay so 2700 individual neighborhood yeah. patrols. Yeah. Now those patrols can be listed they will be a part of V5 but when we go on neighborhood patrol um, there's several selections that the officer can do. He can select Haynesville as a whole because it's easy to go through the different neighborhoods in a matter of minutes and rather than change everything on the computer, we go in as Haynesville and just control all the neighborhoods. But there, the neighborhoods are broken out. There's um, one for Misty Hill uh, specifically. There's one for um, uh, Cranberry Lake specifically. Um, there's one for uh, the business district right here. Uh, 134 and 120 specifically. So there's probably five or six different selections in Haynesville that an officer can type in and it will register, but they all do register B5, and that's how we determine our uh, those numbers are. If it is attributed to B5, it's in Haynesville, as everything else is Grizzly. So it doesn't matter how we enter it, if it's an address in Haynesville, it comes to B5. And they can the uh, computer aided dispatch. Uh, our records management system will default to that if it's an address within those GPS points. Now, are these above and beyond the regular main path patrols? You mean beyond calls and things like that? These are self initiated neighborhood patrols by the officer. These aren't in response to calls. These aren't, and this is an officer driving out here and saying, I'm patrolling this neighborhood, logging onto the computer. Is self initiated, not assigned. Any other questions? Okay. All right, thank you, Chief. Treasurer Kelly Hensley. Well, as Jeff mentioned, we're undergoing our utility bill at utility billing audit this week uh, for the rest of the week and possibly another day next week, possibly next Tuesday. So they can wrap up more things. There's a lot of testing um, of the actual bill that went out with the proof that yeah, there's a, there was a bill and proof that followed that bill throughout the whole process, even of a payment and going grabbing out check statements to make sure the deposit applies on there. So um, we got our second sample, Karen and myself today. So we're working on that. We'll be working on that quite a bit tomorrow. And there's another sample coming tomorrow on like the commercial end. So it's a, it's a little bit different type of uh, audit because at least it's concentrated on one subject, you know, utility billing, but it's just uh, we are the first ones for them. Um, this round of it with Lake County Public Works, and it's a learning experience, they told us, um, for doing this. So they're trying to learn what we go through to apply to, so they could do all their testing the right way um, and make sure everything is uh, getting forward over Lake County Public Works. So, like, again, that should be wrapping up end of this week, next week. And, and this is the first time this has ever been done in the history of us doing water bills. Yes. Which, I, granted, our water system is pretty young. Our utility building is 16 years old, 17 years old, yeah, right there. around there. Yeah. Um, so it's new for everyone, and I think we're a little bit of the guinea pig that will also